are we able to maximize our farm resources, especially at this challenging times of the swine industry? I am Dr. Erika Lubag, the System Specialist of Veterinary Medica Corporation, and I am honored to introduce to you our guest speaker, who hopes to provide us with ways to ensure profitability all along the big chain. As a veterinarian, he has been with Nucleus and Cooperl in the fields of swine genetics and production for 10 years now and counting, and is currently the coordinator in animal sciences in the research and development department of Cooperl in Lambal, France. He acquired his masteral studies at Group ESA in Angers, France, and at Wageningen University in Wageningen, Netherlands, and finished his doctorate degree at Rennes University in Rennes, France. His specializations include the fields of animal sciences, immunology, animal physiology, and data analysis, and has conducted training programs on immunity of piglet before weaning associated with health and performances in 2018, and robustness of farm animal in 2019. Today, we are grateful to have him share his expertise on farm profitability all along the pig chain. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Arnold Boucher. When we speak about uh, profitability, we speak about two different levels. First, the farm level, and in farm level, we will uh, we'll talk about reproduction, feed conversion rate, welfare, and antibiotics. And we will also speak about the meat processing level, and at this step, we will speak about technological, organoleptic, and public health qualities. And I will try to show you how can you benefit from genetics all along this big chain. And you will see that every step is very important. First step is concerning reproduction. We know that prolificacy is very important. And if you want to make to be profitable, you will have to have lots of piglets at winning. First things to have lots of piglets at winning is to have a high number of live-born piglets at far away. You can see that this number of piglets improve a lot in, uh, directly on the farm. So you have a graph here where you have the number of piglets born per liter in average in copper production farm from 2015 to 2020. So in average, in the red just over there, you see that we had from 14 live-born piglets in 2015, reaching 15 piglets in 2020. What is very important is also to see the differences we have between the top 25 and the flop 25. And you see that now the top 25 is very close to 16 piglets born per liter. Second stuff, we know that we are able to predict the performance of the cells and we know that high performing guilds will keep their performance along carry. So those results are results of a project which has been done in Copper, trying to create a model in order to predict the number of live on piglet all along the carrier. And you see that if you, you make some class based on the number of piglets in the first liter, so you see here the three different class of guilds, those animals will keep their production during the whole career. It means that the very high performing guilds, having lots of higher number of live on piglets, they will keep this higher number of piglets all along the career. So the best will stay the best and the worst will stay the worst one. And this is very important if we want then to predict the number of uh, live on piglets. You see also that it's the same things for the number of win piglets. If you win a lot, you will also uh, keep this number of win piglets all along the carrier and uh, the shape of the curve will stay also the, the same. So we have now a model which is implemented in Gober Speed, uh, our, uh, our hub, which can predict the number of live on piglet for a batch of 20, uh, for, for a batch of 100 cells at plus or minus 15 piglets in total. Meaning that at the time of winning, you can know in the following career, so four months later, how many piglets will be win and so it's very important to identify which so you will keep and to identify uh, to predict your production so we know that guilds performance starts from fecundation and it's very important to understand what could explain or what are the factors which are very important in the performance of your guilds if you start just over there you have a main goal one guild at 
artificial insemination. You want this guild as a very good bones and body growth, and you want good development of a reproductive tract and some maternal behavior. For that, you know that health is very important. Health is linked with colostrum intake because your guilds, when at birth, will intake some colostrum. Through the colostrum, will intake some uh, antibodies, which will protect her during the first days of her life. Then the health is also very uh, linked with winning weight because if you have a high winning weight, you know that you have a high growth. If you have a high growth, you have better health. Health and growth are correlated, as it has been shown in some studies. The growth is very linked with the development of the reproductive tract. This reproductive tract will need energy, will need hormone growth which can be found in the milk and which can be found in the colostrum. So the milk ingestion will have an impact of the development of reproductive tract and the colostrum intake will also have an impact of the development of the reproductive tract. It means that if your animal at birth is able to intake lots of colostrum, to intake them lots of milk, you will have higher energy intake and higher growth hormone intake, which will allow the good development of your reproductive tract. Of course, milk ingestion is also linked with the winning weight, because if your piglet at birth is able to eat lots of milk, the growth will be higher and at winning, the weight will be higher. All those parameters are linked with the birth weight. The birth weight will be linked with the winning weight because we know that there is a strong correlation between birth weight and winning weight. If your pig is heavy at birth, it will be heavy at winning. If your pig is heavy, it will have also more energy to go on as a teeth in order to have some colostrum or to have some uh, milk. Then we know that the number of piglets will have an impact of birth on birth weight. If you have a high number of piglets, in average, the individual birth weight will decrease. So by the way, we know that if we are selecting on this, we have to be careful to keep or to try to keep birth weight which stay quite homogeneous and quite high. The parity of the mother, of the mother of the guild, will also impact the number of piglets. So you saw just before the curve according of live one piglet according to the parity, that's a curve like a bell. And then you also have an impact on the birth weight. We know that piglets coming from a guild have a lower birth weight than piglets coming from multiple cells. And the colostrum intake will be also impacted by the parity in terms of quantity but also in terms of quality, because especially concerning the immune quality of the colostrum, we know that the colostrum coming from guilt has lower quality in terms of antibodies and colostrum coming from multiple cells. Gestation is of course very important, also concerning the number of piglets and birth weight, linked with the behavior of the cell during gestation and linked with the quantity of feed which has been intaked by the cells during this gestation. Then the behavior of the cells will be important because this behavior from one cell and in one cell with the group will impact the quality of the gestation. And this behavior will also impact, is impacted, sorry, by the parity of the cell because guilt on her are quite important in terms of behavior. Or they will not have the same behavior that if you mix the multiple cells and uh, guilt. Then behavior is also linked with animal welfare and with growth. We know that if you have a very good animal welfare, your growth will be higher and your behavior of your cell will be different. And behavior of your cell will impact the maternal quality of your uh, future guild when she will have her own litter and his own piglet. Okay, so we know that guild performance are in influenced by rearing phase. It's what it's shown in the literature and what I just show you. And we make a, a study in our GGP earth in, uh, in copper and nucleus. And you saw that so here you have a graph showing the number of live born piglet in the first liters of our guild, link with the average daily gain of this guild between 0 and 100 kg. What we see is that if the growth of guilt is low, so lower than 550 grams per day between 0 and 100 kg, you will have in average minus one piglet on the first liter in, in terms of live on piglet. 
on the other side, you will see that the number of total born piglets is also linked with the average daily gain of this guild between 100 and uh, 0 and 100 kg. Meaning that if you have higher daily gain, you will have higher number of piglets. And what you see also is that if you have some guilds which are born with a very low burst weight, you will have also lower number of total born piglets. Meaning that for your guild, she will be higher than 1 kg at birth and she needs to have more than 550 uh, gram per day between 0 and 100 kg in order to have very good performance. Meaning that the guild performance are influenced by ruling phase and that low burst weight and low growth lead to low prolificacy. If you want to uh, have a better choice of your curled sows, you can reach or you can earn 0.15 live on piglet per liter. So as uh, a data science team of Copper work on a decision tool and this decision tool concerning the curling score will be done on the live bond at parity, the live bond prediction for the next parity, the parity and the win uh, number of piglets. Based on those figures and those parameters, we will calculate the a score saying to the farmer if you have to curl your saw or to not curl your saw. And then to show them that our model is better than the choice of the farmer, we compare the performance of the sow which has been kept by the model and the performance of the sow here in blue which has been kept by the farmer. And we saw that in average for each curling sows, our model will allow plus 1.3 live bond piglet per curl sow, so in total of your herd, plus 0.15 live bond per liter. So this gives the farmer a high possibility to increase prolificacy. So you see that based on the knowledge we get from the literature, from our data and from genetics, we are able to build some choices for the farmer in order to increase those performance. And if we work like that, you see the results in terms of increasing your performance in the figures on directly on our farm. Then if you have lots of piglets at winning, it's good, but you need also to have a high winning weight because if your weight is low, you will get some trouble, especially in terms of health and in terms of use of antibiotics. To have a high winning weight, you need a high birth weight because this, those two weights are uh, correlated and you need to have homogeneity of your litter. I make a graph here based on data we got on copper, so on uh, more than 20,000 uh, liter, to show you the distribution of individual piglet birth weight according to the um, liter size. So you have this distribution for liter with less than 14 live bond piglet and here for more than uh, 18 live bond piglet. What we see is that the proportion of low weight piglets, so light piglets, uh, lighter than 1 kg, will increase with the number of live bond piglet in your litter. And the number of heavy piglets will decrease also with the number of live bond piglets. It means that you will have in average a lower weight, but what is important is to try to keep some homogeneity, meaning no very big piglet, no very uh, light piglet, but average piglet weight for all uh, the animals. You can see here the association between birth weight and life born in terms of curve. And you see that as soon as you decrease the number of live born piglets, in the litter will have a decrease in individual live weight and what is important is of course the individual weight in terms of average but it to decrease the heterogeneity then we know that if you have low birth weight you will have some trouble in terms of mortality rates here you have the birth weight of piglets and the mortality rate from birth to slaughter. What we see is that in uh, red just over there, if you have very light piglets, 
so in average less than one kg around 800 grams you will have more than one third of your piglet which will die before going to the slaughterhouse. And when you increase your uh, birth weight, this rate will decrease until around 10% of your piglet. So this relationship or this association shows us that we have to do a lot in order to have heavy piglet and homogeneous piglet. Then I will show you some graph yeah, which has been uh, selected in the bibliography to show you the impact of the weight of the birth weight in terms of weight at the slaughtering or, or weight at uh, the beginning of the fattening period. If you have here one kg differences in birth, you will get three kg differences at winning. So in this case, winning is at uh, 28 days old and 15 days differences in terms of days at slaughter. It means that the piglet, which has one kg higher, will arrive 15 days before at slaughterhouse. If you are going now to the figures of those animals, you have some class over there of birth weight and with all the performance you can get. So it's based on our data with more than 28,000 piglets in our farm. You see that minus one kg birth weight will lead to plus six days at slaughter, minus 10 kg corpus weight, and minus 13% in terms of peak price, meaning the very high impact of this birth weight on those data and meaning also that what we see on our farm is also uh, in accordance with, with what has been published in the literature. If you have lots of piglets, if you have a high winning weight, you need them to have autonomous cells. So those autonomous cells is very important if you want that your cells is able to rear your piglet during the lactation phase. If you want to have those autonomous cells, you need to work on the maternal quality and on milk production. It mainly works based on the number of functional teats, the farrowing duration, the farrowing haziness, other quality and aggressivity of the cells. This can be work only at GGP level. It's a work of breeders, it's a work of selection. And if you select those kind of animals, you will be able to increase the capacity of your cell. Then if you want to reduce the feed cost, you need to make some formulation of feed which meets the pig requirement. You have here a graph with uh, the nutritional or nutrient requirement, let's say it can be for lysine, for example, or for another one, with uh, here according to the age of the animals. You can make a model to try to predict the average pig requirement of a population. In this solution, you will try to create some feed which will meet those requirements. Basically and historically, we make some formulation with two phases during uh, those periods. So during the first phase with feed one, so the gross feed, you will try to meet the requirement of the higher pigs. And then you will meet, you will formulate another feed with lower nutrient concentration and lower cost to meet the requirement in average of the population. This is very good, but we know that we can be better. So in copper, we develop a five-phase feed called Synapse. And this five-phase feed will try to meet better the requirement of the pigs. And we do that by changing more often the feed to be more close, more close to pure. Each time, of course, your feed will be at lower price. So you will not improve the feed conversion rate, but you will reduce the feed price. And by the way, at the end, you will reduce your feed cost. What we know, and it's based on data from R&D department, is that each individual pig will have its own curve. So it means that before we try to formulate a pig based on 
the average of the population, but we know that this average will heighten lots of heterogeneity. So what we will do with the individual feeding system, it's for each day, for each requirement, we will formulate one feed, meaning that one pig for each day will have a different feed, different feed from the day before, different feed from the day after, and different feed for this day for all the pigs. By the way, we will be able to meet the requirement of the pigs and to reduce the feed cost. Up to date, we have around 2.5 to 3 million pigs in our cooperative, which are rise under a requirement without any antibiotics. It's allowed mainly because we work on the health status of our reproducer. It means that we have GGP and GP4 under our filtration. By the way, no as air is filtered just before entering the farm, we reduce drastically the risk of entry of pathogen on the farm. We also have the transport under air filtration, so track with air filtration transport spot which allow a complete of course security concerning animal health in the farm and then we make a regular monitoring of disease so our animals are free of prs of mycoplasma of actinobacillus and we check them very often to detect very quickly if some trouble can arrive on those diseases all the stuff is to work on the robustness of our animals. So the robustness is very linked to the high winning weight. So it was my work during my PhD program. We make some research on the, on farms, some experiment on farm, and we show that we can categorize some pigs before winning, which are more robust and less robust. And the pigs which are less robust after winnings are characterized by a very higher mobilization of body visibility in terms of mobilization of fatty reserve, for example, activation of immune system. So they are producing much more antibodies and they are producing also a much more acute phase protein. And they also have a higher oxidative stress. So it means that we are able to identify those kind of pigs. But for the moment, it's at research level and its price or uh, the cost of those kind of selection is too high to be implemented at a larger scale. If we want to select piglets uh, for uh, robustness, we can also try to trace or have a traceability of the genealogy of uh, those animals directly on the farm. And it's one of the projects we have running now about a recording of genealogy of animals directly on farm, meaning that based on this, we are able to follow directly on production farms so different kind of production farm with different kind of environment and disease. We can have a look on antibiotic use on on cell longevity, longevity with individual data, meaning that with data from production farm, we are able to select animals on GGP farm, select the animals which are the best performance on production level. Based on this, we're calculating EBV at GGP level and EBV in several environments at production level. If we go now to meat processing level, we also have some issues. First issues is about the meat technological quality. So we work mainly on pH and the reduction of three plus. Why are we working on this? Because it's linked with the yield of processed meat. So it's very important at industrial level and the risk of product with default. So we are measuring this on our animal in at GDP level. You have here a graph of pH and three plus pH and 3 plus uh, in red from 2010 to 2018 and the selection of those criteria improve a lot the meat quality and uh, the parameter of pH and 3 plus. Second thing is about the increasing carcass yield. So we are able to measure live weight before slaughtering on some animals. We observe some carcass yield in the Pietran breed. So you see here uh, in this graph that in commercial pig, we are around 76% of carcass yield. In Pietran, we are around 80, 85% of carcass yield, meaning that we also have a way to select our animal 
on those criteria in order to increase the carcass yield of our animals. So you see that we have several compartments in the pig chain at farm level, at meat processing level, which can be mobilized in order to improve your profitability around the pig chain. Genetic has all its part on it, and it's also very important, of course, because if you have your genetic potential, you can work to try to express this genetics. But if you don't have the genetic potential at the basis, you will not be able to reach those high performance. So based on our know-how, how can we face new challenge? Because it's also a question. New challenge, for example, is challenge about animal welfare and the monitoring of boar taint on farm. We decided in Copper 10 years ago to ban castration. And so it means that we have to monitor risk of boar taint. It's what we do, more or less. It means that we started with a level of boar taint close to 4% and working on farm on the peak chain, we managed to reduce by 2 this boar taint and we are now around 2% of boar it means that if you understand all the steps of the production, if you understand all the factors which can improve your big chain, you will be able to reduce this taint or to face new challenges. You can have some challenges in Philippines, for example, just right now, and those challenges can be reached with success if you very well understand all the steps of the big chain and if you act really on the steps which have important in your country or in your situation. What we did for castration, we identified some risk factors and now we are working on those risk factors in order to help farmers to decrease the boar taint. What we did also is that we identified some stuff concerning scatter and understanding concentration. So those are the two molecules which are responsible of the boar taint. And we know that our sire line and especially Pietra is very low risk concerning this boar taint this risk of protein and so we decided uh, to select our animal based on this so we reach or we launch sorry no other bulls based on this knowledge and we have no 100 percent of our children are without any others other challenge we have to face is the free movement of uh, so during the lactation period so it's still at rnd level in average we have more wind piglet and we have heavier piglet and of course it's the same we have to really well understand what are the key figures and the uh, key parameters of the big chain in order to manage to reach a very good performance based on this new criteria. When we think about, uh, about animal welfare, and I will take some example about the ban, for example, of tail and teeth docking we really have to think the pig farm has a system. When we want to ban the tail docking, we know that it's not just stopping the action because you will have lots of trouble. So it means that you have to take into account all the parameters concerning environment, concerning health, concerning building, concerning feed, and so on. Those criteria are still all those uh, stuff are still on experiment on ggp farm and still on experiment on some production farm but we will reach it only if we think it about a system and last i think if we want also to work on animal welfare we need to assess our farm on animal welfare and sustainability and it's quite a, a new subject for us because concern about animal welfare is quite uh, old, uh, 20, 20 years ago. But we didn't have by the past so much criteria to assess our farm and to make them on a way of improvement. So it's what we did with an audit we developed in, uh, in copper. And uh, now we are around 60% of our farm uh, audited up to date, meaning that we will have to work to help them to improve on this criteria, going on some labeling on animal welfare based on a star system we also develop on some other criteria. So if I have one message based on this presentation is think system, use your know-how for a tailor-made solution. 
each situation is different from the other one. The French situation is different from the Philippine situation. In France, the situation of one farm can be different of the situation of other farm. So you have to take all the steps of your big chain. You have to really try to identify what are the key factors, what are the key elements of each parameters. And based on this, you will be able to build your solution which will make you a success in your business in conclusion the profitability all along your pitch chain will come by genetics and by thinking system and if you think system you will be able really to uh, get profitable on your farm in france in philippines and whenever you are thank you very much nucleus is the first player uh, in swine genetic in france uh, we are the swine genetic subsidiary of Copel. In Nucleus Genetic, uh, we want to focus not only on the farmer's expectation, but also on all the big chain expectation, from farm level to slaughter level up to meat processing level. Because we are the swine subsidiary of Copel, we are able to collect a lot of data at slaughterhouse. And we are the only swine genetic company able to do it thanks to Coppel slaughterhouses. It means that we have one person in Nucleus dedicated to data collect at slaughterhouse to measure car car seal, meat quality, for example, drip losses and pH, in order to always improve the peak chain expectation from farmers to slaughterhouses, meat processors, industries and consumers' expectations. To produce antibiotic-free and get good performances in swine production, it's very important to get high sanitary status. In Nucleus, we take a lot of this criteria into account and it's very, very important for us. All our GDP farms are fitted with air filtration system. We respect a very, very high sanitary protocol, biosecurity, and we apply a very strict control on analysis. Uh, it means that we analyze different diseases randomly each month, like for example, PRRS, mycoplasma, classical swine fever, rhinitis, etc. etc. For us, sanitary status is the key to get good performances. Indeed, uh, due to the COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine, it wasn't easy, but we finally found a solution to deliver healthy animals to Manila Airport. Uh, we started in France with a selection on the purebred heads, then we did a quarantine in France before to export them. But as uh, predicted, our animals have been delivered in Manila in very good condition. Today they are healthy and as predicted, they adapt themselves very well to the local context and the Philippine climate. Even in a particular situation on a very difficult context, in Nucleus we are always able to find a solution because our priority is to satisfy the customer expectation and find solutions for farmers here on the Philippine market.